for that. What we're going to do now is we're going to move on over to Ethereum. Ethereum is currently sitting at $2,417, and it is in a very interesting position, as is Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a head and shoulders pattern now that is pointing down to $25,000. I'm personally not convinced that we're going to go all the way down to $25,000, but there is a very solid argument to be made that we're going to go down to $30,000 at this point. We're so close. Oftentimes, there's a magnetism to trend lines, uh, to, to, to support and resistance levels. It probably will drag itself down to $30,000. Okay, we'll see. I don't, I don't want to bet on that, but it is in the cards. And Ethereum's kind of seeing something similar right now. We can see on the four hourly chart that there is this uh, bull flag that is playing out right now based on the last little bit of price action. We can see that uh, Ethereum has gone into a small uptrend right now. And if it were to play out this bull, uh, this bear flag, I'm sorry, I said bull flag, this bear flag, if it were to play out this bear flag, we would see it drop all the way down to 1775, which is our previous level of of uh, resist of support that we set back earlier on last year. And that would actually make a lot of sense. It would mean that Ethereum would have the opportunity to quadruple bottom down here at 1776. I'm just going to call it 1776 because I really like what happened that year. But we can also see that it might pull back down there mm -hmm. and then a and then Bitcoin may very well do the same thing. But let's take a look at some of our technicals and see what they uh, what they are saying. Number one, we are not seeing bullish MACD divergence on Ethereum in the same way that we were on Bitcoin. We're seeing lower lows on price action and on MACD. I think that's largely down to the fact that Ethereum has dropped much more rapidly ever since Christmas than Bitcoin has. Ethereum dropped 46% in that time, and Bitcoin only dropped 35% in that time. Ethereum was holding itself really well back in November and early December, but right around Christmas, it started to jump off the metaphorical cliff and caught up with Bitcoin's retracement. Now I think they're both going to go to their similar previous lows that we saw happen in July. That's why we're not seeing that MACD bullish divergence. Now, on the RSI, we're actually sitting very low on RSI. We're currently sitting at 26. That is the lowest level that we've seen on RSI since March of 20. 2020. So it's been almost two years since we've seen RSI go that low. And that's because we are seeing a major capitulation event happening over the course of the last couple of months. And Tim, I want to ask you this. What do you make of Bitcoin and specifically Ethereum having RSIs that low? Does that mean we're about to see a bounce or does that mean that the bears are so much in charge that we actually are going to see those July lows? Seeing them on a, a, a time frame like the daily chart, it's 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 one of these things. It's, it's the the bottom is close. That doesn't mean, and, and close in two ways. One in terms of price, and the other in terms of time. And when you talk about time, that's that's a, a big thing. Is Sam and I actually several times have conversations. We start disagreeing with each other, and then we pause. We're like, wait, are you talking about like hours, days, weeks, months? Because that's a big deal. So when I say close, I'm talking weeks. When I say close in price, I'm talking weeks. Like maybe the price goes down as far as. I think, you know, Jeb, what you said, even using your analysis you just used about the bear pennant or the bear flag, we could go down to 1700, maybe 1750. If that happens, I've said this before, it's the exact same formation on Bitcoin, mm -hmm. which would take us down to 25,000. I think the two are pretty correlated. You're not going to get one and not the other. However, there's also a case that, guess what? There's a time where pennants and flags end up reversing. There's a, there's a chance it goes to the upside. There's a chance it goes to the downside. What you have to do is now say, all right, I'm not going to live and die by this one formation. I'm going to go find other things that back this up as well. What we're seeing on Ethereum, again, is, is almost stinking identical to what we're seeing on Bitcoin. And that is, you can go to my chart real quick, Smay. The first thing is, when I say it's identical, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to flip back and forth. I bet you, unless you look at that corner, you really couldn't tell which chart I'm looking at. They are so close. The only difference is if you know that Bitcoin had this little double top uh, right there, that's the difference between it and Ethereum, whereas Ethereum's a little more rounded. But on the daily chart, we are still very much in this downtrend. It's the weekly chart that I want. I want you guys. I know people call this hopium, but at the end of the day, people do need hope. And by the way, people playing that game, I just said in the day again. Uh, so I know you guys love that. Anyway, this right here, this massive bearish RSI, bullish, bullish RSI divergence we have set up for a long time is still into effect. Hmm. And I want to clarify, if we go down to 17, uh, let's see, if we go down to the, this bottom right here around 1900, or if we go on these wicks right here on 1700, we will still be in bearish, uh, bullish RSI divergence. We'll flip from strong bullish to what's called hit, uh, sorry, it's called weak bullish. But just so you know, weak bullish divergence and strong bullish divergence are the two that actually call for reversal of trends. 
It's hidden and medium divergence that call for a continuation. What we do not see forming right now is a continuation divergence for bearish movement to the downside. We do see the bullish setting up. And so I say we are close. What does that mean? It does not mean we can't go down. It does not mean the price isn't going to go maybe as far. I don't think it will, but it may be as far as 1750. But what it does mean is we are narrowing in and getting close both in time and in price to seeing a bottom. And the, the point is continue you to watch continue to look out watch the charts watch the news listen and form opinions for yourself because if all you do is go to twitter or instagram or youtube and you just follow what somebody else is saying when people say this person will get you wrecked they'll only get you wrecked if you stop thinking for yourself if you listen chew the meat spit out the bones and make your own decisions you are going to make a very good investment coming very soon with both ethereum and bitcoin absolutely well let's keep it moving here guys i have some other technicals i want to show you first and foremost if we look at the uh weekly chart here on ethereum as he said we are seeing some massive bullish rsi divergence showing up on the weekly chart that is remarkable but on the weekly chart there's also several other things that we can see namely we have actually just hit a nine flash on TD sequential, a bearish nine flash. The last time we saw that happen on Ethereum, you have to go a long way back to see it. It was actually back over here, and then we all, and then eventually we did see a major rally form. You don't see it happen very often on the chart. My chart just glitched out. Let me go ahead and reload the page. Sometimes the the drawing tool messes up a little bit. But the other thing to show you here on the weekly chart is where the point of control is on VPVR. VPVR point of control is sitting right here at 1800 bucks, which would make a lot of sense because that is where the market would likely go down to if my prediction of uh, seven of $1,800 were to happen. But the other thing to take a look at here is the fact that we're actually very overextended on the Bollinger Bands. We have pushed very far into the Bollinger Bands, and the Bollinger Bands are very wide. I actually want to see the Bollinger Bands be wide because the Bollinger Bands being wide tells us that the, ma that the market has a lot of volatility. We're seeing the volume is up and there's actually still a lot of people that are buying into these projects so smay i want to wrap out this segment on ethereum with your take on this what do you think ethereum is going to do do you think it's going to go down to 1800 or do you think it's going to bounce more so uh, sooner than that um i gotta be honest with you i'm not exactly super into uh seeing what's happening with ethereum but just from my i think just extrapolating from where i think everything else is kind of what everything else is going to kind of do for a little bit um I, I just think it's there's just nothing nothing has happened yet that for if say there is a rally or any kind of price movement I don't think it's gonna be a big one you know what I mean mm -hmm. I think we're gonna be moving within a very very small range for a little bit uh, mm -hmm. until something break something uh, you know changes that fact you know nothing as uh, in you know. Uh, what, what's the what do you say it's like you're the trend is your friend to, to it ends or whatever you know yep. it's like until something comes to be the anomaly that changes the narrative here uh you know i there's no reason to expect something big either way you know um so i think it'll probably be staying within this little range that it's in for a little bit and i think that applies to pretty much most of the coins happening uh most of the coins right now unless something is the catalyst that drives some kind of price movement or there's huge institutional adoption so hey you made it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely consider subscribing because we're trying to help you become financially free in these cryptocurrency markets. And also consider following us on Twitter at CryptoJeb for more updates on the price of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Peace.